Electron affinity, kind of like the opposite of ionization energy. So um, here we're talking about energy involved in putting an electron on. So this is not the, re the energy required to glue an electron onto an atom. It's also not necessarily the energy released when you give an electron to an atom. Um, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. So we, we call it the energy change when a neutral atom gains an electron. So here you've got the neutral atom, you're putting an electron on, and here's this Ea, the electron affinity. It's usually negative, exothermic, so in that sense the atom is giving you money and you're giving him the electron. That's kind of what you expect. But it can also be positive, meaning it's like, well, yeah, I'll take your electron, but you're going to have to pay me to take your electron, right? Oh, you want me to drive that new car? You're going to have to pay me to drive the new car, right? Like, who would do that? Well, things like the alkaline earth metals and the noble gases. Why would the noble gases be resistant to having an extra electron? Because they're already the cool kids. They're already the cool kids, exactly. They have eight valence electrons. They've got it made. We're set. We don't want anything to mess us up. And so to put an electron on them is a huge imposition, and you're going to get a, a highly positive electron affinity. So the electron affinity trends are much less regular than the other trends. In fact, it can almost barely be called a trend. We do see that for group 1A, there's a nice trend um, going down the group. So as, as we go down, electron affinity decreases. So that means it becomes more positive as you go down. Other groups don't show a trend like this. Um, in general, electron affinity increases as you go across a period. Um, the way I think about this, do I have a period? There's a periodic table. So if I'm trying to do a, a general trend going across. So I'm gonna maybe going to look at lithium and I'm going to look at fluorine. Which of one of those is found as a negative ion? Fluorine. Fluorine. Fluorine makes negative ions. Have you ever heard of a lithium ion? A lithium ion with a negative one charge? No. no. It doesn't want another electron because that's going to make it like beryllium, who's even less cool than lithium. Lithium wants to lose an electron, become like helium, right? So not wanting to take electrons, more wanting to take electrons. So for these guys, the electron affinity is, is small. It's closer to zero than for these. This is large negative, okay? That, that trend is just like really kind of the Bottom line, though, highest electron affinity in any period is the halogens. The halogens are really motivated to take that extra electron because then they become like the noble gases. Most of these are negative, um, but all the halogen ones are positive. The reason it says greater than zero is because it's so resistant to that that I think it's pretty tough to even measure it. Um, properties. So metals and nonmetals are broad categories of elements. Um, most people have an idea of what a metal is. You know, if I give you a couple of different objects and ask you, is this metal? You'd probably be able to, to, to get it correct. Like the soda can, right? Is this soda can metal? Yeah. Well, how do you know it's metal? Well, shiny. It's, you know, we, we just have all this life experience that tells us that this is metal and the double gulp cup is, cup is not metal, right? These are the properties of metal. So malleable and ductile, those are two words that you're probably not familiar with. But let's think about a chunk of metal. You take a really heavy, hard hammer and you bang on it. What happens to that chunk of metal? Yeah. It dents. Does it shatter like glass? No, metal doesn't do that. Metal's going to dent. If you keep hammering it, you can hammer it out into a sheet eventually. Metal can also be drawn into a wire. That's what ductile means. So 
you can draw it into a wire. You can't do that with nonmetals. What we see is the properties of nonmetals are basically the opposite of metals, kind of like their names. This is metal, this is nonmetal. This is malleable, this is non-malleable. They're brittle. They'll tend to shatter. Metals are shiny, right? Pretty, that's why we make jewelry out of them, they're shiny. Um, nonmetals tend to be dull. Are all nonmetals dull? No, but they tend to be. Metals can conduct heat and electricity. Nonmetals, not so much. Um, here's more chemical stuff. Uh, metals form oxides. Their oxides are basic, and they are ionic compounds. The ionic part, we hopefully have a good grasp on. Metals also form oxides, but their oxides are acidic, and they are molecular in nature and not ionic. Metals form cations. Nonmetals form anions. Metals lose electrons. Nonmetals gain electrons. You should be familiar with those uh, properties. So when we talk about metallic character, we're talking about how closely does this element's properties match up with the ideal properties of a metal. So you can have two metals, and one can be more metallic than another. It's like, I guess you could have two guys, and, and one guy's more masculine than the other. They're both masculine, though, right? But one's just more. So metallic character increases across, I'm sorry, it decreases across a period and it increases down. And this one actually is the easiest. So periodic table here. Oops. Double oops. OK. Stair step line. What does that line separate? The metals from the nonmetals, right? So over here we have the metals. And here we have the nonmetals. So as we're going across a period, metal, 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 well, semi-metal, non-metal. I did that wrong, didn't I? It starts around aluminum, but not, not right there. It's up here. That's better. Did you get the idea? Metals into non-metals. So the trend is, as you're going across, things become less metallic. So if you compare aluminum and sodium, aluminum has less metallic character than sodium does. <laughs> Going down a group, so, uh, nitrogen is a nonmetal, nonmetals at the top, metals at the bottom. Metallic character increases as you go down. Any questions? It increases. And you can get that just by looking at that stair-step line. There's nonmetals on, on top of the line, and there's metals on the bottom. We're going from nonmetals to metals, metallic characters increasing. Going across from the metals to the nonmetals, the metallic character is decreasing. So there's looking at it with just a regular old periodic table. These guys in purple are the metalloids. So gallium's a metal, germanium's a metalloid, arsenic's a metalloid, selenium's a, a non-metal. There's a trend. Okay, which is more metallic, germanium or tin? Got to find them in the periodic table. Germanium and tin. Well, look at the stair-step line. Is it metals underneath or non-metals underneath? Metals are at the bottom. So as you go down, it gets more metallic. So more metallic would be tin, right? It increases going across. It decreases going across. Because we're going from metals to non-metals. Gallium and tin. It's one of those diagonal ones. So going across, we would have decreasing metallic character. Going down, we have increasing metallic character. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't try to guess. But if you had to. If I had to. 
I'd probably guess tin, just because tin is a metal I've heard of, you know, that you've run across, a tin can. Anybody ever gotten vegetables out of a gallium can? You know, maybe it's more metallic, but there's got to be some reason. So I would guess tin, but the best answer here is definitely it's not possible to tell. How about phosphorus or bismuth? Yeah, so there's some, some guys in between, and bismuth is down here. So we've got that trend, but we also have an actual line here. The line goes right through here. Phosphorus is a nonmetal. Bismuth is a metal. So which one's more metallic? The metal, the bismuth. Boron or nitrogen? Boron. So we're just looking at going across. Well, which one's closer to the metals? Boron. The boron. So boron is the more metallic. Is boron a metal? No. No, it's a semi-metal. But it's more metallic than nitrogen. Questions?